He's like, what's the hell Oak's thing about? Don't tell him. Just wink at him. Just like, <laughs> yeah, just, just be like, you know. And welcome back to another Linux Game Cast Weekly. The show that covers the latest Linux gaming news, reviews, how tos, and most importantly, whatever the hell else we come up with. I'm Vin Stone here at LGC Axel, switching the bits, doing the nightmare fuel all under Linux. Joined every week by the soon to move tea drinking, coffee drinking, blue man, up top, Jordan Svang. I man, mix tea and coffee. The keeper of half. Laptops and notebooks in Britannia. Stay in a plate. One Pedro Mateus. And together with you, Shutroom Dynamic, joining us live, <laughs> helping us form Cocaine Voltron. Deal with it, YouTube. You know I say it each and every week. You wanted to monetize, but you only kind of do. <laughs> what? What? Aren't they giving us money? When, when did that start? <laughs> hey, man, we almost hit $40 a month one time. Woohoo! Oh, woohoo, man. Shut up. <laughs> Make your own too early for the shilling penguin. <laughs> What's up, Never lovely, too early. lovely people? So we got a couple of things to play with. A uh, bunch of Steam stuff, bunch of news. Before we get into that, uh, we play a little bit of catch up, maybe a little bit of mustard, but like to condiment on each other's life organs. Starting off, Pedro, because you have the most, even though it's not from the 90s, it is the most 90. It looks like a netbook <laughs> that somebody put a body kit on. It's uh, it, it is very orange. It's a Toshiba NB 550D that I got off eBay for a solid thirty pounds, and it's got the nice Harman Kardon like, speakers. It's Halo. got a, a teeny tiny mm. little subwoofer on the bottom there. It's audio wise amazing, and it's got a dual core. Uh, what is it? AMD C60 APU. Which Where, uh, did did you take the spoiler off? <laughs> They didn't come yeah. with one. <laughs> did, did, did it come with like the low ride kit? Um, so what, what's 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 the plan with it? What's the uh, what, what's the end goal once it's all set up? Yeah, the uh, goal here is to get a thirteen sixty six by seven sixty eight screen to replace the ten twenty four by six hundred. Mm -hmm. That's currently in there. Uh, the uh, RAM, it, it's limited to four gigabytes per channel. No, and no, it has I, the I, one I mean, slot, so, so, so <laughs> I, I want to stop you right there. I mean, after you go put about $400 of parts into a $30 yeah. laptop. Yeah, that part. Uh, it's shiny. I want to keep it. give it away. All right, all right. <laughs> I mean, I might give it away at some point, but uh, for now, it's just shiny, and Absolutely. I want just just don't give it away now. Um, <laughs> no. Let's get started. Give it away. Early. Give it away. Yeah. Give it away now, <laughs> Jordan. That's not. It's, it's not. You, Go on. <laughs> I I heard you were living in the luxury of two lows. Oh, two home hardwares, yeah. Yeah, the, yeah. I went to the first home hardware. It's just like, oh, luxury. Yeah, I had to go to the next town to the other Home Depot. Well, it, um, it, it's all about a pipe. Right. Like, you, you, you would think, hey, Home Depot sells pipe. Will they cut me this pipe? <laughs> no. So I, I go to the first Home Depot. I'm like, okay, you have the pipe. Will you cut it for me? No. I go to the second Home Depot. They have the cutting machine. They have the guy to cut the pipe. Do they have the pipe? No. If I bring you the pipe, will you cut the pipe? No. <laughs> well, fuck my life. Mm. I genuinely would have just, if I knew I was effed on that, man, I would have laid back. As we were talking to the pre pre super shows. I'm like, so, what if I bought a pipe here and I brought the other pipe and kind of like slid it under where you were cutting it? Yeah. My, my, my goal is to not turn every interaction I have with a salesperson into a Monty Python sketch. So. <laughs> I, I, I don't have the time I mean, for that. a strange goal to have in life, if but I, okay. Okay, if I had to be perfectly real, I would... I, I, I'd just cut the shit and be like, can you be bought? Like, right. one to one. I, I would have just said that flat out, look, dude, or do that How in your eyes. How many and, dollars like, do you want like, to do this going to cost me? Like, yeah. Right, right, right. If, 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 we, if we just pretend... Can we, can if, we go if, out if, back if, in the alley and you can... Yeah, and then yeah. the pre pre super shows, and I'm like, listen, I'll 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 bring a gun. I'll point it at your head while you cut the pipe. You you will have full deniability here. I just, I, I, it's a simple problem. I didn't expect it to be so complicated. I wanted to buy some steel pipe and get it cut, uh, but apparently I can't do. I can buy one. I can do one or the other, but not both. I I'm you sorry. can't cut pipe in Canada. No, no, no. your your pipe must remain uncircumcised. <laughs> Oh, shame. <laughs> what would the uh, Moyle think? So, check this out. Uh, I think I've found a way. We've been playing around uh, with some audio stuff past couple of weeks because, um, hey, it's me. And I was one up the game. 
So we've been using the Sonobang bus and I've been tying it into these machines where it gets challenging is these machines are not, there's no audio noodles running between that and the stack back here. It's all done over IP audio and it didn't want to play nice with NetJack 1, but I think I found a way to make it work. Um, we'll be testing that out this evening. So, but still fair warning, there might, in the live stream at least, might be a clicker in the pop or if I accidentally miss one, um, Pre-apologies if it shows up in the podcast, like, ah, what was that? And uh, P.S. NetJack 2, unlike NetJack 1, has always been and continues to be an absolute dumpster fire. Yeah. Just like the horse? Just like the horse. I mean, it's been a few years, and we thought that if we gave it some time, it would get its shit together, maybe hey. get a job. But no, no, it just continues to sit there and give us content week after week. It's the Steam! Update! Let's get ready! Dota, yeah. So you 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 might be one of the people out there who's like, yeah, Dota. I've I've heard about that. Nope. I don't know what it is. Um, and that would be that would be a lot of people. Is that a real oh, character? Oh, Please don't miss. We will character. we will we will get to that in a second because this is <laughs> that 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 is that is some special bullshit right oh, there. Okay. But but I I, I I wrote some notes on it. I, I just I, <laughs> but but anyways. So Dota people people uh, people have been fans of games like League of Legends, Heroes of New Earth, the original Dota, Dota Two. It's a little hard to get into there is a lot of stuff going on there's a lot of strategies there's a lot of metagame uh, a lot of new players bounce off it and considering the community has adopted a strategy of get good be instantly amazing at this game at your first attempt or get the fuck out of here maybe maybe Sounds growth like is kind of limited yeah so uh, Val Val Valve is trying to the Dota team at Valve is trying to address this uh, they're they're doing a thing where they have a very very limited shop interface for new players so that uh, so that you can find items that will be useful and you don't have to like drill down into the minutia of all the bonuses and penalties just yet you can turn that off um they have a bunch of bot modes to sort of teach you how to play the game and then when you're ready to queue up they'll put you against like some of the top rated bots so that you know it's not completely completely terrible but they've they've brought in this guy too this scroll, scroll up a little bit we got we got to talk about our our whiz bro here hi um, jordan they have, i'm whiz bro uh, can yes, i whiz on they you? Have, <laughs> they have reinvented Clippy I didn't hear and put no. a Dota and they put a Dota twist on it. Yeah, pee on me, wizard. I want your whiz. Yeah. So they, they they've uh they've invented a Dota Clippy and they've given it a little hat. But basically it watches your gameplay and if you're you're like trying to tank with a character that's not a tank, it'll say like, "Yo, maybe maybe you shouldn't be doing this." And I don't I don't know. Reading through all of this to me, it seems reasonable, right? Um, because D Dota is super dense. People are not going to be able to get into it. You need to have some way of easing people into the meta game and actually teaching them how to play the game so that you can maintain a community. Um, and I hope it works. At least they have a new animu to to draw in some new people now. They turned Does anyone Clippy into yet? a fucking warlock. They did. He's his patron saint is. De is the devil oh man Bill Gates. so okay man like like most of you i'm going to assume man now i understand there's a gang of people and each to their own but when it came to dota never fucked around with it up until it was available for linux once and when they added the vulcan render i went and played around my entire experience is uh you know i played the tutorial then just kind of bounced down as one does yep. now once you know like someone feels comfortable like queuing with the co-op mode i think that's kind of neat man they're gonna go up against top rated bots you know before getting dumped into the hornet's nest that is nope city also valve don't assume i know what a damn smurf is i had to google that because i'm old and yeah, yeah. <laughs> for, for for those of you who don't know a smurf account is a existing player who gets a new account to uh basically stomp on some noobs because he actually knows how the game works uh this is a problem yeah, when people get just, like bans yeah it's not just for ganking noobs it's also for say you have a pretty stacked friends list and they see you're playing dota and they immediately uh slide into your dms like you want to play with me you want to play with me you just start with the Smurf account and you play without anyone bothering you. There's that I suppose, side of it too. <laughs> I, I, th I think most people don't care about that. The majority of the Smurf complaints have to do with griefers who are just like, Haha, I f I'm really bad at the game, but I'm better than new players. So this is how I'm going to get my jollies. Yeah, this is what I don't get. How is that distinguishable from everyone else playing? 
because mm-hmm. like man every time i what was it savage s3 does that sound familiar i, I, I tried yeah to I, I played that it was free with my motherboard back in 2004 <laughs> there was the one on linux that was my first experience with momos it's like oh wow this toxic community thing okay that's that's a legitimate definition of toxic right there i'm just jumping in i'm oh, trying that, to help they're, they're horrible me? yeah it, what you said is not a, not a stretch at all it's like you better be good on day one or get you know die in a fire noob this at least they're trying to do something to address it to which i will say man might have been helpful 10 years ago yeah no it's a pretty bad time to be introducing the glossary at this point nope it's a, I, the, you, you know, there's, the, there's, there's that old saying. Pedro, Pedro quit being like <laughs> that. Smurfs can't read. Yeah, the, the the best time to plant a tree was 50 years ago. The second best time is right now. At uh, least they're doing something, right? I don't know. I just like, I, I hope somebody got done with that. And it was like, Valve time, bitches, shades. And just like. I, I, I wonder, though, like for someone doing the glossary, it took them that long to actually make the list of shit. Possibly. Because mm-hmm. the. Because it keeps evolving, they keep changing what words mean, and now, now, now we have to well, go queue up in our flippity floppity floops. Good news, kids! We got a sale. It's live. There's live stream and stuff oh, because Valve every now and then remembers that they have this function. Um, mm-hmm. But what is it? It's the remote play together sale and live stream. Um, this is going on until the 29th, and you too can. Wow! Don't do that, Valve. Do not ever do that to me again. Uh, Controller-friendly games. This is stuff they're trying to push because uh, we recently talked about it. We might be talking about it this week. Uh, Remote Play Together is dropped out of beta. So it's something that you're able to hammer on. And they're like, hey, look at all these wonderful games. Look at all these wonderful games, Pedro Mateus. That. that. The slightly better edition? No, no. These these are better than regular games because they have... uh, local coop but you can't play them online but if you use uh, remote play together it will give you the illusion that that shit's going to work halfway right it's not right right it's, it's it's the games you can experience 0.5 seconds out of sync with your friends because developers <laughs> refuse to include an actual network <laughs> multiplayer mode sale to be yeah. fair that only happens you know between me and you and me and Ven because there's a big ocean in between the no, two of you no, you no, no, probably no. do some no 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 no, no, no. <laughs> I, I've played with people in Toronto I've played with someone literally a 10 minute drive away from me with remote play and it's bad. Oof. They're just, okay, that's that's bad. <laughs> well, you got to imagine your remote play is going to be R and Jesus. Sometimes you're going to have a good experience. Most of the time it's going to be ish, but I do not. Um, for me. Yes, we played uh, with Foxy too. Yep. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> That we just do that for comedic effect, though. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, like that, that that's bad with like proper network multiplayer or remote play. It's it doesn't matter. You, yeah, it's you the have same to thing. realize like, well, they're in the studio with this dialed in ass system. It's still a full second with audio, man. <laughs> so for me, thanks, Valve. This is like a big list of games that I have no interest in buying. Yeah. Uh, to be fair, though. Uh, all other publishers on the planet that are out there trying to make money are going, yeah, we don't want to tell people that they could just buy the game once and then share it with their friends and play it with them. Valve is like, oh god, please someone make use of this feature. Here's a sale. Here. <laughs> it, it's a weird push, man. Um, because I've, I've kind of looked at uh, Remote Play Together as an absolute last resort. It's not a go-to thing, and I really don't consider it. It's neat. It's neat, Valve. Working on that, good on you. But it, it's not a selling feature. It, it needs no. work. <laughs> it, it, it addresses a very present gap in gaming right now, but it's, it's still very much that Band-Aid solution, right? It doesn't, it doesn't fix the problem. It gives you something to tide you over until hopefully... And I want everyone in, to understand what, in game our two, biggest man. pushback on this is developers do not rely on this as your crutch to get out of setting up proper multi player especially yeah. if you're going to be using something like unity half the work's done for you okay yeah mm. there's a couple of different multiplayer systems one of which also includes uh sim integration mm. i don't remember the name of it now but it's there well <laughs> let's talk about the next fest because yes they're going to be celebrating upcoming things yeah there's going to be uh, a bit of a change in the name of the steam game festival it's going to be called the steam next fest and it will be running from june 16th to june 22 so that's 
something to look forward to. Uh, when I first Marketing. saw the news, it's like, oh, they're stacking sales on top of each other now. But no, no, no. This is later on in the year. Okay. So, yeah, instead of the games festival, um, you have the next fest. That that That's the bulk of it. I, 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 I have a question. <laughs> Pedro, how many times can you say next fest really, really fast? Not many, because I was having to deliberately pronounce Next Fest very, very slowly so that I would get it right. Otherwise, it'd just the be moral Next of Fest. the story is make all your sales <laughs> tongue twisters so that no one can fucking talk about them. <laughs> the biggest thing that I have um, from that announcement is Steam used the YouTube video. <gasps> yes. <laughs> in, in, instead of Steam broadcast? <laughs> yeah, like, here's an embedded YouTube video, which, I mean, the Steam store supports, you know that if you're a developer, but uh, that weird, weird choice, considering, like, this is like a Steam thing. Like, we'll use YouTube. I guess there are reasons. I guess there were, but... I, I don't know. I'm not going to lose yeah. sleep over it. Like, hey, that, yeah, no. that was different. <laughs> I've, I have been losing sleep over it. It, it haunts my every waking moment. What do yes, we have uh, for the new... YouTube embeds keep Jordan from sleeping, but that's because he can't put his phone down. We have Steam, uh, the... <laughs> Steam Link Links. Not to be confused with Shields. Yeah, it is just the usual roll-up of all of the beta updates into the Sable client. And the Steam Sable-ish client was released on March the 22nd, and it is... Yeah. It was re-released then again on uh, March the 23rd to fix an issue, uh, but I bet yeah. that would be right off with it. Not accidental <laughs> UHD. Yeah, accidental UHD From if you were doing book. remote play. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and uh, there's a gang of fixes and new features that they introduced. It is the usual just beta roll-up. But the, uh, what I would like to bring up are the things that they still haven't fixed that have been there since I can remember basically the td tiny little update window that shows up the bit where you're supposed to read the update notes that's still just a blank screen for me uh pressing the uh right control or shift keys gets them in a stuck position so they're always active you have to click them the best again thing i like about the uh blanked out know what page was talking about like every time you get like if you're in the beta especially you mm -hmm. see this two or three times a week is you get the like oh what's new and as soon as you click restart, you get to see it for a nanosecond. It's, yeah, little, just a little tiny bit. You this, sort of see it's this, like, ah. Oh. Exactly. This, this is not something that's just on one. This, it's across the board on Linux. This is the thing you run yep. into. And mm -hmm. you get a little worried because sometimes, sometimes there was, there was like three or four weeks where it worked. Mm -hmm. Remember that? And then it, they yeah, broke it. Right back it's to like, it. Yeah. again, God. Dang it. What but yeah, the right control and shift keys also get stuck, and then you have to hit one of the left ones to unstick them. Uh, the um, I am genuinely get, glad for the improvements. I am. the Do not mistake me, Valve. I am. But um, I'm just glad that, you, you know, it, the overlay no longer crashes if I type a chat message while I'm playing a game and I just have the audacity of putting an accent in one of the vowels. Yeah, that was annoying. Quit using vowels. We've been over this multiple times. Yeah. No more vowels. Con consonants only. It's, it's just a waste of letters. This is why vowels Hebrew is the superior. Vowels. This is why Hebrew is the superior language. They don't deal with vowels. That's great. Um, That's your excuse yeah. for everything these days. Check it. Yeah. Oh, uh, <laughs> we got some top yeah. releases to go over. We do. Oh, it's the the Eye of Sauron. That's what that thing uh, looks like. Uh, but yeah, they have uh, that blog post they put out every month that shows the uh, top rated or top selling games of the previous couple months. Mm -hmm. uh, last cup. Yeah, that two months ago. They're they're always that. behind by a little bit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The point is, <laughs> Valheim and Nebuchadnezzar are your top selling Linux games for February. Uh, and I think that was, that was kind of it. We, we talked about some games that came out in February, but they didn't apparently sell too well. Yeah, I didn't uh, see that. I've been, kind of been on the lookout for something new to play, and uh, neither one of those were like... I mean, <laughs> Valheim. <laughs> Valheim is taking off. That's I will it. probably <laughs> end up just buying a copy of Valheim to support the developers. Like, hey, thanks for, you know maintaining your linux port but i have no interest in that whatsoever it's i do have job. interest in it but i not an early access you i don't what? want it to be perma early Pedro access kind of likes it i might buy myself a copy just so he can watch me play it 
Okay. Well, I mean, you I mean, uh, <laughs> our our our, our, our Patreon uh, the play it. <laughs> yeah. I was, I was going to bring it up, bring that up. Uh, Source or so and uh, Tux Ramus in uh, Discord. They've been streaming some Valheim mirrors, occasionally been joining them. I don't know. I, I always feel that, like, if I had friends to sort of drag me along, I'd have fun with it. But if it's if I need to, like, pick up the game and play it myself, I'd probably bounce off it. I, I would. um, Yeah, I would need that and some drugs for like. Uh, I mean, that, that's 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 a given. With that's me, right? implied. OK, OK. <laughs> Hey, you asked me if I'm on drugs. I, I am, am drugs. drugs. Yeah. Since we've had a proton or a sacral release. Yeah, there's a new one. It's a uh, it's a little busted. Um, nice. But, <laughs> yeah, salesmanship. Bit. Uh, but you know what? Glory Segral has admitted this. Uh, right? He basically says right off the bat, if you really want to play Mortal Kombat, this is the release for you. Otherwise, skip it. Um, yeah, there's there's quite a big list of uh, broken games. They're still trying to sort the MF Plat stuff. So this release has kind of broken it, but. You know, there's there's nothing stopping you from rolling back to an earlier version of Proton unless you really need some of the wine sick stuff. But, you know, we'll, we'll talk about that a little bit in the news segment. Um, so, yeah, that, that's kind of it. It's still it's still in progress. There's probably going to be another release in the coming weeks to fix a lot of these things. This is what happens when you try to, like, jump major versions. Things break. Uh, but this is kind of the purpose of the Glorious Egg Roll project is to bring some of those new changes, break things quickly and figure out solutions so that we can this upstream. Is true. Do you think MF Plat's going to be something that is ever going to be able to be hammered down to like your single version or there, there's always... Uh, forever I going to be I, like this one's pretty much going to work with this but except you know there's going to be the exceptions i i think for, for maybe, the most part yeah the the exceptions will always be there but uh the glorious egg roll actually brings up uh derek the mf platt uh patch set author is working to improve the uh current very very blessed implementation because i remember when uh I think it was Arthur that gave me um, Borderlands Borderlands. 3. Yeah. And I started playing it, and you need to watch a video at the beginning of the game in order to progress, and it wouldn't play with regular Proton. So I changed to... um, Proton GE and the video started playing, but then the game would freeze. That issue, as it has, it was fixed a few versions later, but that's back now. So... Yeah. <laughs> well, I do feel a little bad because of when these it started showing up in um, Proton, Proton Experimental, and like these videos, like the games that I were I was currently playing, I didn't have to sit through the intro video bullshit. It just went right to the mm-hmm. beginning. I'm like, what? <laughs> no. Then I had to go find what to rip out to get back to where it was. Yeah. They, 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 need, to have, they, need, to have, <laughs> they need to have a command line, so it's just like, shut off MF flat. I yeah. really don't care about the cinematics. Yeah, it'd be nice. Yeah. But the thing that I really like the most about the new version of Proton GE is that they are bringing the dual sense bindings that Valve has been. Thank you for that very much, Valve. Uh, they've been working to implement the proper layout. Uh, and button mappings for the dual sense, and that's been ported over to Proton G. All right, thank you. <laughs> so, Jordan, me and you went on a little adventure, and we got to meet Freddie Mercury. Yeah, we we uh, we we were angry at some streets. <laughs> we were we tried to kick their ass. Uh, we fell out of some elevators. <laughs> we fell we fell off quite a number of things. <laughs> In, 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 in that in that adventure, jumping we, from a singular, we, jumping from heights will not help you evolve wings. No, we didn't. No, learn <laughs> and, and and we fucking squeaked by two. Oh, boss, and that was that was pretty good. But uh, yeah, we have uh, from the Steam DB website uh, hints of some DLC, Mister X Nightmare. We don't know. We literally know nothing else about it other than the name. There's uh, the pitch for it, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> but uh, there, there's some there's some DLC happening for it. Maybe it's going to be some new levels. Maybe it's going to be some new characters. Maybe it's going to be a little bit of both. I want this because um, Streets of Rage. We finally, I mean, it it's even has experimental Vulcan support under Linux. Thanks for liberty. But um, it was kind of short because me and you're just tooling around, not trying to get any accomplished. What did it take us like three three hours? 
four, three, four hours, something yeah. like that. Uh, yeah. Th- and like th- that game, there's a lot of like, oh, you want to get the top score. Oh, there's like stuff you want to do. And if that's <laughs> if that's your gym, like I, I know Jim Sterling was like super happy that that was if, the style of game that they if made. that's your gym. But, but if you're somebody like but, my yeah. play style is or, like, I, I won't or, beat the game. Or me. Yeah. 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 <laughs> So, I, I I finished story mode of Streets of Rage. Like, okay, that was fun. I'm, yeah, I'm done. That was a game. <laughs> Pedro? Uh, it's a game that I like to sit down and play. I don't really care. Uh, beat em ups were the game that I played at a friend's house because we it had multiplayer and two or more if they had a little expansion thingy. Uh, could play at once, but that, 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 that was about it. <laughs> Good Not news, everyone. Good news. <laughs> Choo-choo! Gonna, we're going to lose some bets on this, man, because... I am. Jeez. <laughs> In a mere two years, one month, and 30 days is 789 days total. For anyone that might have been keeping count, I sure wasn't. Um, we're getting something. We're getting a game released on Linux through the trials of fire and arguably the mistake of only being released on the Epic Crame Store. Mm. A year later, as an exclusive, uh, came to Steam. A little bit later. You know, do you know what I'm talking about yet? Yeah. Metro Exodus Spartans. We have an update for you on the Mac and Linux versions, which shock fell over. It's going to come out on Wednesday, April 14th. So, yay. And it's also, also, it's going to be tracing some rays. Yeah, I was I was damn shocked about that. I was I, I look I look forward to it only working on the 3080, by the way, but <laughs> can't use the LSS. You gotta trace those rays at the native resolution because fuck your frame rate. <laughs> I, I mean, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just happy that like, oh yeah, this game comes out. We've been waiting for the week that my computer is going to be boxed up and moved to oh, another yeah. house. That's how it works, That's- man. Now, yes, uh, we do want to like we're covered there later on in the tweet thread. Uh, Linux will be able to run ray tracing as long as your hardware is capable. So. I'll you do it. have two uh, RTX cores in that 2060 event. Yeah. <laughs> and you know what? Like, even though I'm on week three of, like, show me a 3060 at MSRP, <laughs> and we're done. Like, I'll, I'll, I just need it at this point. And, um, yeah, uh, I, outside of, like, testing it, I'm going to be honest with you. I mean, the only thing I have currently on Linux, I think, as, like, as a whole, if you want to play with your RTX tensor cores and make them work a little bit, is uh, Microsoft's uh, Quake 2. Quake 2, yeah. Yeah. And... That that is delightfully pu- non intentionally humorous shit show on a twenty sixty because at ten eighty p in some spots you can get about forty three FERPs. That's about it. Listen, you you need the superior ten eighty ti where you can get emulated fourteen frames a second RTX, baby. The only thing it taught me was it don't look that much better. Um, that's that's not worth. But then again, you know the twenty sixty does. I don't know. It, it's got it not really meant to play games i didn't buy it for that so yeah i'm excited uh also uh metro give me give me hook me up give me like one of those 1999 cells like this guy's constantly been on over the last two and a half years <laughs> when this gets released <laughs> i'm just saying yeah no, i've had the game I, for a while uh and i look forward to finally playing it because i haven't started it just like oh you're releasing the linux version okay then i'll wait right <laughs> I I'm, I I look forward to the announcement on from Epic where it's like the the week the Linux version comes out. Oh, it's free on the Epic Game Store, by the way. No Linux version though. Mm. <laughs> That's <know>. fine. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. We do have one new game though. <laughs> yes, <laughs> and it's not Super Monkey Ball, uh-huh. but it is basically Super Monkey it's Ball. Super Monkey Ball's um, where's this man? His cousin. Yes, it, it, it's, it's, it's a cousin's relevant. roommate, friend, girl's friend. It's, it's, yeah, it's super <laughs> Lemmy Winks ball because you're like a rat or a hamster in a ball. Of- yeah, yeah, definitely of the uh, rodent kind, and uh, it is it is Super Monkey Ball. That that's if you've played Super Monkey Ball or uh, Hamster Ball or Spectre or Ball Ste- or Steam or- Worlds. Literally any of the uh, ball rolling, uh, level tilting, navigational games. That that it's more of that. 
and I'm not complaining. <laughs> this this <laughs> is basically me and a little masculine downtown, man. I mean, it's kind of frightening. Yeah, okay. it, it is. I don't know, judging from the trailer, the screenshots, I don't know if it adds anything new to the genre, but it is an early access, so maybe they will add some more new stuff because from what they're showing, it seems to be fairly shifty as hell, man. Yeah, super monkey pyramid. (laughs) There's a giraffe there, so super monkey giraffe. (laughs) The exact same um, system requirements for Mac and Linux. Wait, Linux and Windows, no love for the Mac. (laughs) Dang. <laughs> There's only Windows and Mac here, <laughs> or Mac and Linux. I, 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 mac don't, and I don't cheese, know. Baby. All right, I want some Mac and cheese. God damn it! Coming up next, Wine has a new version. Godot lets you fuck your face, and Valoran has some airships. Windows Asset Production here. I don't know what you guys are talking about, but we don't. No, sorry, Bob. There's never anything that goes wrong ever in an episode of Linux Gamecast Weekly. Your voice is going to have like nine different pitches in the post version. It's going to be very glitching. (laughs) I fully expected it too. Upside down. It's going to look like a Daft Punk video. It's going to be great. This is going to be drugs. One One more more time. (laughs) None none more times, man. There's no more Daft Punk. Feel sad. Oh, man. Feel sad. Maybe, Maybe you can console yourself by donating to our Patreon by heading on over to patreon.com <laughs> slash Linux <Gamecast. laughs> If you're sad about we, that we, part, the cure. If you're sad, the cure is <laughs> Linux Gamecast. You heard it here, folks. Yeah, uh, become a Patreon. It's pretty great. Uh, sign up for a uh, dollar an episode. You get access to our Discord channel. Uh, you get access to the pre pre super chosen that podcast that we do an hour before we record this, where we talked about we talked about a bunch of stuff. Um, this one was less technical. It was more movies and TV. Uh, other times it is, can we make this thing work? Followed mm. by essentially dubstep. Hey, it's you know, like proce- procedurally the, generally. In dubstep. the defense of technical, I, I probably spent a good four minutes explaining why I hate NetChuck. Two, that, not one. Fair. Yes. Yep, that, that's, that's true. You get you gave us the, the recap of getting some of us working. But yeah, you get all that cool stuff. A little bit more. You get access to the show notes. You can watch us make the show. You can issue uh, corrections. You can offer suggestions. It's pretty great. Uh, if you're an executive producer, you get a live video feed for the pre pre super shows. And you can even just show up and like talk to us. But no one does that. Who does that? We have intelligent viewers. This is the issue. This yeah. is the problem. <laughs> yes, In, <laughs> indeed. Uh, we also we also have one of those uh, store things stored yeah. on xgamecast.com. Oh, oh buy yourself buys. some. Okay, I just realized it. Hands off. It's just like <laughs> blinking. Ooh. <laughs> do not con- do not adjust your computer. No, we control people. the vertical the, and the horizontal. The Linux Gamecast facial shirt is magical. It does that all by itself. <laughs> <laughs> I, I like I like that it's called the face off shirt and then the faces disappear. It's great. This is exactly how it works in face real life. On, face off. <laughs> we, we, yeah, we got we got masks, we got coffee mugs, we got stickers, we got hoodies, lots of stuff. Deck yourself out in Linux Gamecast merch. Confuse your neighbors, irritate your friends as you do. You know what? Uh, we Next got, time you're in like your uh, business goal with like Zoom, and like what the hell is that about? And like I can't tell you. Yeah, wear, 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 wear that use me <laughs> shirt in your next in your next <laughs> business call with your C level execs. And you, like, good questions. Like, what's the hell Oaks thing about? Don't tell him. Just wink at him. Just like, <laughs> yeah, just just be like, you know. Mm. Yeah, uh, that's we, we why got, I don't turn on the camera for work. Yeah. <laughs> because you got uh, shit to explain like the rest of us. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Uh, sp- speaking speaking of the stuff behind us, you can help supply that by going to our wish zones at Amazon. The links to that are on our website, uh, LinuxGameCast.com, under the support tab. And yeah, uh, if you buy stuff off our wish lists, you can send us a note. We got to read it on stream. This can be very, very silly. And if you buy stuff off Venslis, wish list, wish list, it is deteriorating with a quickness. Wish list, uh, yeah. Uh, you, 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 you get your name on the blinky board. Uh, we got to thank some people though. Um, yeah, we want to give like, and a Basil. hard shout out because what went mm-hmm. down? I think it was Basil was earlier on. It was like, yo, you know what? I'm watching this Twitch thing. I might have been inebriated a little bit, but I wasn't going to mention it. And. Um, <laughs> Pedro and I were doing a thing live streaming as we do sometimes yeah. and he dropped a gang of gift subs. So spend some Bezos bucks for us. And Hey, if you get a gift sub, make use of it. You can hop on our discord and uh, watch all of our old VODs and stuff like that. And 
Man. You know, Salty got went to that, and Salty was like, nah, <laughs> Wait, homie. someone um, else is cutting in on my turf? Nah. <laughs> and then there was a shootout. The yes. end. <laughs> Unfortunately, what we're trying to say is we've lost two important members of our community. <laughs> there were no survivors. <laughs> salty the nails. Yes. Thank well, you, beautiful it's, people. It's all, it's all, it's all salt and basil. We're not beholden to anyone. We don't have just you. So... That's an awesome. That's a great thing that we're able to do it like we do. So that's enough of the shilling penguin. On to wine. Yes, the best kind of wine. The one that lets you run applications that weren't entirely designed for Linux or at all for that matter. But yes, wine 6.5, it's out now and you can go download it, kick the tires, uh, figure out if any of the 25 bug fixes affect you. The uh, ones still, that stood it out. Shouldn't. It still bugs me that somebody <laughs> is running quick in 2014 to the point where we're like, yo, this needs to get fixed. Uh, Oh, no, no. So, so, someone got burned by this. There's like some audit they're going through and they're like, fuck, we got to like get this Quicken thing running and it doesn't run on Windows 10 anymore. Mm-hmm. And But yeah, the ones that jumped out to me were uh, Dark Souls 2, Scholar of the First Sin. If you change to the Vulcan renderer in uh, regular wine, it would just show a blank screen. Now it actually shows things properly. Uh, and Outlaws and Dark Forces 2, which happened to share the exact same engine, uh, one of the old LucasArts ones, uh, have the, the, the background music from the GOG version actually works now, which is very good to see. It's uh, I remember starting up Outlaws. Uh, it's one of the few games that I have uh, in GOG because I very much liked that game back in the day. And it's I can hear the, Hey, Marshall! Marshall, but no music, and the music was very nice, so, but yeah, the Steam, uh, there was a bit of a regression that caused Steam to crash if you launched it with wine, and that got me thinking, why would you want to do that when you have Proton in Steam? Oh, Mac, right, mm. okay, yeah, no, don't despair, that works again. <laughs> Come on, man, you got to think about it, you don't have to use wine to play Steam games on your Mac, like, you, you've went through like, hey, at least we get more games than Linux users to, oh, this is bullshit. <laughs> Not anymore. <Yeah. laughs> now, now, now you get our table scraps, how the tables have turned. Yeah, uh, the, 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 other thing, the other thing they added here, which is kind of interesting, is they've started implementing the syscall dispatcher. Uh, apparently, they're using it to get around some of the anti-cheat in League of Legends. Uh, it's cool to see some progress on this front. If they can get so if like if, if it's good enough to to, um, you know, pass League of Legends sniff test, maybe we can start having it work on easy anti-cheat. Mm. That's, the, that's the hope, right? Like, That'd be nice. It'll be interesting to see. Um, always, always, always excited to see what these psychopaths are up to. But, good oh, toasters. Speaking of psychopaths. Things on your yeah. head. <laughs> Indeed. Uh, they have some uh, new updates for Godot 3. Point whatever the hell the version coming out is. Um, That's 3. an interesting 3. choice uh, of a title, but okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, Godot 3.3. 3. 3. It, it has an open XR plugin now. Uh, they've been working pretty hard on it. Uh, it is working great under Linux. Because uh, it works with uh, the Steam stuff. Unfortunately, they have a bit of a problem with uh, with, <laughs> with with Microsoft. They were using they were using Angle, uh, which was an OpenGL to DirectX library, sort of like a Dixvix in the worst possible way yeah. uh, mm -hmm. to get the DirectX code running. <laughs> that apparently is not going to work too well with uh, VR, especially now that Microsoft is no longer supporting that. So you know they're they're hoping they're hoping someone knows anything about that. I think they may start needing to they may start to need to leverage the open source directx 12 implementation you know the one i'm talking about never heard of it yeah no that that, that that's actually a thing that microsoft did and it's in the nvidia driver so oh no i'm, I'm, I'm talking about i'm talking about d3d vk Oh, yeah. <laughs> VKD 3D. <laughs> uh, but uh, Angle, when I was reading through that, it's like, Angle, where have I heard that name? Oh, yes. Alex of uh, Project Heartbeat uh, Development fame uh, was uh, ranting on our Discord a couple of months ago about how basically if you wanted to get close to uh, DirectX level performance out of an AMD card on Windows, you needed to use Angle. Mm -hmm. to do it <laughs> because the open gel drivers are poop complete poop i do like the fact that they went through the trouble of saying oh and about the hololens and both people were like hey we 
That's fun. <laughs> Well, M- Microsoft gave them a free HoloLens to be like, yeah, figure it out, right? Um, mm-hmm. That would be the only way, man. So, Pedro, you have a lot of shit in your house that blinks. More so than Pedro and my... Jordan and myself. Hi, I'm Pedro. Shut up, other Pedro. I'm talking to Pedro. <laughs> I'm Pedro Tsvang. You look alike to me. Come on. <laughs> That's racist. fair. <laughs> But yeah, it's uh, both I, I like, do listen, man. You both look like monitors. <laughs> listen, we're, 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 bo- we're both white guys with beards. It's the same. We're the same guy. <laughs> There's some blinkies happening right there. And uh, the mouse technically does it, but it's set to do it. The mouse mat also does it. And admittedly, there's a lot of blinkies, the fans on the uh, how much, how much razor, how much razor stuff do you have? None. Are you trying to do a low key razor ad? Where's our gallery? We got to get cut in on this. Uh, yeah, no, I you, have. You know, yeah. call, call us razor. I'm just saying. I have absolutely no razor stuff, and we did mention uh, that Open Razor is now up to version 3.0.0 on Wednesday, and basically, if you have a razor device and you've been using it on Linux and you've been uh, loathing the fact that it doesn't let you set all the blinkies and doesn't let you set you know the RGB stuff off if you do decide to do that well now you probably will be able to because if you look at the full compatibility list on their <laughs> on their github landing page it's wouldn't it take less time to one. put yes yeah basically <laughs> Uh, there's probably like two or three that were really popular at one point that don't work okay. but yeah it is most of them and like the the blade stealth the uh bungee mouse the ornata chroma the death adder the base station the firefly all of these the are the latest versions of those, names dude you're about to unlock like the winter soldiers or shit <laughs> Calm down. right yeah <laughs> but yeah all of those are now supported with the latest version and one of the things i pointed out on wednesday was that why are none of the because on the github page there's also the list of hardware that makes use of Open Razor to allow you to control all of that. And there wasn't Open RGB. Like, of all the other software there, no Open RGB. So I went to the Open RGB GitLabs, like, okay, if no one else has mentioned that, I will. Someone else had. Ah. About a couple of hours after the uh, podcast went out on YouTube, so. Not going to say we had something to do with that, but we probably had so something to do with it. What was the issue? I, I I saw you hooligans in Discord um earlier this week, and somebody was like, "It doesn't work with Open RGB." It's like build it from source, and everyone rejoiced and like everything's working. Yeah, now. what was that about? Foxy made the very very uh like completely off remark of like, yeah, the, once I built it from source, it actually detected my things, and I'm like, wait, what? So I pulled the git, built it from source, like, oh, look at all my stuff. And then Arthur did the same. It's like, oh, everything shows up for me now. Yeah. Cool. Moral, moral of the story. <laughs> build from head always. No, dude. Here's Pretty, the thing. Actual, actual, re- actual release branches? <laughs> Fuck those. Unstable code. Bring that. This Bleeding edge. This explains why he's been walking around with a blindfold. <laughs> that also explains why she started blinking. Because she has some RGB. The thing with even with all of that, open RGB does not support the keyboard. Oh no! Throw, it, it, throw it away. <laughs> no, I have. Uh, uh, I am looking up how to submit like the stuff that open RGB needs in order to support a new device, because they don't make that particular information very easy to find. Stop. But usually, usually will... it's like a uh, lib USB <laughs> keycap. You gotta you gotta do a recording of that. And... Usually, but I. I, I don't see where <laughs> just, just, where to just send, send that them, information just, to. <laughs> just send them like a Wireshark capture of just like arbitrary Ethernet traffic on your network. Hey, can you get my RGBs but, working? But do it in like 30 chain messages on Twitter. Just make them more clear. Yes. yes. Yeah. Put, put the entire dump on like a Git gist and have them be like, hey, can you... <laughs> or better yet, take a photo of the thing and <laughs> yes, please support. <laughs> you say that like I have not actually seen that, which I have. Uh, so Everyone no, no. <laughs> when I was working at a place, literally someone printed out a report, wrote on it, scanned it back, put it in Microsoft Paint, highlighted it again, and then emailed it to me. It was it was yeah. Don't don't underestimate these people. Don't okay. Just don't. <laughs> So a game that we've talked about was um, 
Valorian, right? Yeah, Valoran, named after everyone's favorite Star Wars character. Um, and also, no, Valoran, Chancellor Valoran Valor? from The Phantom Menace. <laughs> from The Phantom, no, that's that's that Brannigan. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it, so it's basically like a Minecraft Breath of the Wild type game, exploration, sandbox, roguelike, that kind of thing. They've been, they've been chugging away at it, and it's starting to look really, really good. They have a lot mm-hmm. of overhauls here for uh, uh, net- networking, AI, pathfinding, all that stuff. They and, got airships, you know, they, Jordan. They have airships. You can fly around on a little dirigible and you can have a little mobile base for your hang glider shenanigans because that's half the fun of this game. It could be full of airships. It could. (laughs) But it's not. Honestly, like the more I see of this game in development, the more like I actually really want to play this. It looks really cool. Man, do you know Um, what the uh, server uh, tech ref needs? What? Airships. (laughs) <laughs> probably can, can we just get well, some ASCII uh, they airships don't have, uh, they uh, didn't have airships in the copper uh, build system for Fedora but they do now because there's a copper repo for the game <laughs> All right, <laughs> but is there is there an Arch user repository for it? That's it's a not a real piece of software. That probably already airship, existed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, dude, pixel guy in the sky, baby. I'm all down for this because like this game. I remember you know months and months and months ago. It's, this thing's Java too, right? Yep. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And Pedro, how well does it scroll? Oh, it scrolls. It scrolls uh. all the way out. That's how they got those screenshots because that game, if you scroll all the way out, you can see the playable area. Dude, like, <laughs> all of it. That that that's like a I don't know, Mountain Dew got a hold of the wrong shit. But some fireworks, man. I'm so down with this. Uh but yeah, no, I see multiple people like in the uh the airship, and that could make for some very interesting MMO moments. Just right, from, yes. I, I want to go back. I, I said this last time. Every time I see like a big chunky update from the team, even the first time I played it, which was a far less uh, feature complete uh, compared to this, I was impressed. People were running around doing stuff, and I, I was running around trying to kill a pig. It's like I'm good. I I'm tried to kill a manticore, and the manticore killed me. <laughs> I glided around because I'm a butterfly in the sky. I can go twice as high, uh, but I can't open source my engine code though. Yeah, you can. Everyone can. Oh, these guys, if you're these brave guys enough. can. Yar, <laughs> matey. Oh, Yar, hard, sea dogs, man. Uh, they are pleased Titus to from share Final the Fantasy news 10. that they've received permission <laughs> yeah, from is. the copyright holder <laughs> to open source the code for the Storm Engine. Yeah, if you played a pirate game in the past decade, uh, oh, and wouldn't that be funny if it was uh, the back end for um, Raven's Cry? Yeah. Raven's No No. Oh, <laughs> oh, that'd make my day. So, uh, yeah. It's out, it's on GitHub, and you can uh, legally go play with it, um, but I don't think we can Linux it just yet, can we? Nope. Uh, it requi- I looked through the build chain, it requires still Direct a lot X. of stuff on, yeah, on, on Windows. X9. <laughs> but, you know what? Dixvix exists, so you, we could probably get a 3D stack oh. running relatively quickly okay. with it. So it's the game engine uh, behind Sea Dogs, Pirates of the Caribbean, and Age of Pirates. It's... Yes, right. But but like yeah. Now now that the source is out, I expect Linux support inbound relatively quickly, right? It's it's, it's, it's a CMake project. Yes, Conan it is, it is, Conan it is, it is. actually okay. exists under Linux. I did I did check a bunch of their build ups. Some of them do exist under Linux. They just never built this for Linux. Uh, I said Linux a lot. Linux. Yes. <laughs> Someone's going to have to crack open some uh, VS code on Linux and uh, just uh, hammer out the make files. That would be nice. I'm lazy. Please do it for me. <laughs> oh, that, that's my Look, Looking for a windward replacement? Yeah. <laughs> Air it out. You know what? Sometimes I get a little curious. No, I'll, I'll start digging around. But yeah, something like that. I look forward to whatever, like playing whatever comes of this. And it's good. This is yeah. great. This is great preservation yep. stuff too. I mean, yep. mm-hmm. and uh, some of the code is documented. Now, albeit there's a large, chunk, large chunks of it are in Russian, but nonetheless fair <laughs> if, if if you if you if you speak ruski then go nuts fair enough so pedro you're the only one of us that uh has a chromebook right i do it's a uh one of the acer r11 foldy ones go get it touch screen. run yeah. run <laughs> well, get it. Get it jordan out. you should take this opportunity to explain to pedro why is it effective human being for owning such a thing 
I mean, he's just a defective human being in general, owning a Chromebook notwithstanding. But so um, this is from Android's, AndroidPolice.com. Links to all this in our show the notes. The only thing I'm thinking about uh, is that is a chonky boy for a Chromebook. It is. Does yeah. it detach? Eh. Nope, it, it, it doesn't detach. Around. It just folds. Yeah, Come it's on. just the folding. All right. just, just like every laptop can do. By the way, if you're not, if if you if you're wondering if your laptop can do this, it can. You cut it on. Yes, yeah. you just open the lid. If it's off, it turns on. <laughs> but you know, you know what? Pedro, People are have you been trying to do Chrome. a low key Chrome OS commercial? Uh, no. No, no, because he doesn't have like the horns or the green robe. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. So, um, people people have been uh, hacking around with Chromebooks for a while. They're running a version of Gentoo, so people are like, "Hey, it's running Linux. Let's see if we can, you know, get a CH root running." They have uh, with Crouton and whatnot. And then the question became, "Can we actually get games running on there?" So, there's a project called Virgil 3D. It's part of the Mesa project. The idea is that it uses QEMU to emulate a GPU that will essentially pass through to a host GPU. It's useful if you're running stuff in containers or virtual machines, um, not if you're using an NVIDIA driver, because then you have to pay for a quadro, but you know, whatever. Um, once once, once, you, once, you get this up and running, theoretically, uh, with an unprivileged container, you can use your actual Linux and use graphical applications on your Chromebook, as you do. So, right now, Virgil really only supports OpenGL, and the current method of doing things is really expensive. The performance isn't great. Uh, games are usually very, very chuggy. But now, uh, Virgil is getting a Vulkan backend, which hopefully means that by having... Yay. <laughs> um, substantially reduce the driver overhead by having cheap pass through by taking advantage of the features that Vulcan provides. You can have a working decently performant. And when I say decently performant, you got to remember that these Chromebooks do not have dedicated GPUs. The best you're going to get is like an Iris Pro. But, you know, temp well, temper your expectations. The new Eggsies, the new Chromebooks have uh, the Intel Eggsy. Okay, right, which is, which, which is Iris. Iris. Bros. Yes. <laughs> yeah, like, like, let's, let's be real. <laughs> but, I, I mean, it's it's better than nothing, right? You you will have a Linux environment and a relatively cheap laptop that you can run graphical apps on. It also opens up the door for Proton to work because all of Proton's yep. DirectX emulation is done through Vulkan. So... Will it work near well? Near native performance I, at that point, yeah. <laughs> near native, per, well, you're, at that point, you're going through two different abstraction layers. Mm. Will it work well? Oh, maybe, but it's a start. How, how far away are we from um, just pulling up an entire uh, Windows 10 VM to play a game casually? Like, boop, all right, done. Let's play a game. All right, sure Yesterday. Then. Okay. <laughs> On a netbook. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, tomorrow. You need two uh, GPUs to do that. I got the reliably. I can make it <laughs> not not with Virgil, you don't. <laughs> yeah, with Virgil, you don't. Yeah. Come on, man. You know Thunderbolt 11 <laughs> will support GPUs that a stick. That'd be nice. <laughs> Although I, having tried the USB uh, GPUs on the Dell docks, the uh, Display Link ones, mm -hmm. they're not great. So. <laughs> Well, I don't the moral of the story is connect all your displays over USB two. I guess one of the things um, to ask about this, like <laughs> when when they say this is an early stage stages, this is still at the uh, kind of walking around, it going, huh, that worked. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you you might you might be able to get an application or two running. GLX it won't necessarily Gears run well. An aspiring. Like yeah, goal. yeah, yeah. GLX Gears works on the current implementation of um, the. Linux subsystem for Chrome OS, but it is, oh, it's not great. <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> you can technically start Steam, but the moment you try to start any game, even, you know, games that are mostly just a flat texture with random things occasionally on it, mm -hmm. they don't work, right? Okay. So, you, so you mean the entirety of Steam Early Access? Yeah, basically, <laughs> it still doesn't work great. <laughs> All right, fantastic. Well, coming up next, we try to attach blocks to other blocks and fail horribly at it. We're throwing chairs at the loof. Welcome back to the Chairquisition. This week, we're taking a look at Aloof, developed by Button X, uh, done on the Unity engine. You can pick it up for about 15 bucks US. What is it? Aloof is a puzzle fighter, just like Puyo Puyo Tetris, but plays completely different. In the world of Aloof, Ooh, you summon and defend small. Yep, it does. 
Defend small items while you build combos against your opponent. We got to thank Button X, who is one person. It's like Racer X <laughs> for sending us the keys. He's like Razor X, but more buttons. Yeah, well, more, more buttons than Razor? I don't know. I don't that's, know. Uh, that's, a, that's a lot of buttons. <laughs> <laughs> All right, um, but you know it, it, it's been a while since Ven got, went first. So uh, Ven, why don't you tell us about aloof? All right, well let's talk about it, man. Oh, look at that! We got um, some Pedro stats up there in the corner. Yeah, I think you're doing pretty good on the frame rate there, Ben. Just yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, 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 you turn on the internal frame loader, it's like eleven thousand, whatever. It's just like so, yeah. It's... Over here on Debian, um, soon to be eleven uh, on my nineteen twenty X Red Ripper Nvidia twenty sixty thirty two gigajoules of RAM, just enough to get by to crush a few frames. Uh, everything's fine. No problems whatsoever. No issues to report. Uh, running at easily sixty at twenty one sixty p. And uh, the Xbox One S, X, S, X, whatever, picked up, had the correct mappings, <laughs> and it even had official mappings when it popped up. It was like uh, assigned uh, mappings from the developer type thing. So I was very happy to see that. The sounds, they make sounds. The graphics, hey, the graphic all over your face. It's kind of brilliant. Now, let's talk about the fun, because you might have noticed we like a good puzzle game, and we love the bad <laughs> one. And my first thought to this was like, hey, are you winning, son? Followed by me going... Fuck you, dad. My brain hurts because <laughs> I got those feels from this game, man. And granted, I did this completely wrong. I did this the Vin way. I jumped right into 1v1 without any instructions because that's how I roll. Needless to say, I had no idea what was going on. So I tapped out like 30 minutes later, mumbling something about the lack of tutorial, even though it was the first option. Again, the Vin way. Now, I played the voyage mode and I had the fucking oh moment because kids... This Tetris game, it's got layers, man. It does. The board has two sides. And you got to make use of both of them. And that's really up to you how you want to do this. For me, it's like shape match on one side and the other side. I have like my attacks ready to be launched at the baddies. Like Jordan, where I whipped his ass. <laughs> uh, you know, Then you have other challenges like, hey, can you just make this shape? And the delightfully evil, make the shape without additional combos or the rabbit dies. <laughs> no one wants to kill the rabbit. Now, game, you made stacking six blocks together challenging, and I gotta commend you on that, because for the first time in a long time, I had a legitimate rage think. It's like a rage quit, but you don't throw anything. You just get up and you're like, I need to go think about this away from here. Then you come back, and it hurts your brain some more. Now, later on, you're forced to like think ahead and stack blocks, drop blocks, because... They just nope when you collect five. So you end up with like these weird structures you see in the middle of the screen there. That's what you're trying to do with your competitor. And you're also attacking each other with combos and there's shields and there's hearts and shit. It's pretty fun. Now, that might sound simple, but mark my words, man. You're going to need to think differently. You're going to be in a, a fuck mothering Apple commercial at the end of the day in order to pull this off because it will start hurting your brain mates where you have to sit back and go, okay, I need to understand this. Now, I also have to this game just a little bit of extra credit because this is a one person joint. According to the credits, this is like, who was involved in this? I want to creep on him a little bit. Just one dude. He's like, hey, I built this. Deal with it. And, uh, you know, he jumped out the window and that's that's just how he rolls. So, yeah, solid three chairs on this. And uh, I'm not even going to play. It's currently on sale. 1349 multiplayer works. We tested it. Unfortunately, there's nobody playing, so it's really easy to play with the Jordan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now, over here on the Ryzen 7 3700X and the GTX 1080, it launched out of the box. And as you can see on screen there, it holds 144, 2560 by 1440, except when loading new levels, at which point the uh, FERPs drop significantly. Uh, the one issue that I had was there's no rebindable controls. You can see what the controls are. You can test the controls. That was like the top option on the main menu. It's like, okay, you can test the controls, see what each button does. And you can have a look to see what those are. That, 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 that's it. The, um... I could forgive that since they actually bound the directional arrows. Uh, but the controller layout is completely messed up. And it completely messed with my um, fragile, fragile brain. The background music loop is short. 
Uh, to be fair, I didn't hate it. I, I'm not sure the Zen type of mood it tries to convey suits the frenetic, square rotating style of gameplay. Zen, but listen, the music I is didn't fine. Hate it. Even that SNES <laughs> track that you snuck in, man, because there was definitely that SNES track. I'm like, oh, that you tried to emulate that chip. <laughs> I, I know that. Song. I don't think. I don't think tense music would work in this game, though. Like, it would fuck you up. <laughs> Probably, but yeah, no, the the Zen and frenetic oh i have to beat the vulture thing and now i have to beat the undead dragon thing oh god uh but yeah it is uh there's a bit of a clash there but i did i did not hate it the character animations are also fairly simple but that's, that's not what we're here for we're here to match blocks and we're here for the fun and i've said it many times before and i will keep saying it the best puzzle games give you everything you need to solve it all at once and Basically, they hand you the loaded gun and then just sit back while you repeatedly uh, shoot yourself in the foot. Aloof misses just one particular part of that analogy, which is it doesn't give you all the bullets. It doesn't tell you where the bullets are. You have to basically just hope that wherever you're reaching your hand out will give you the bullet that you want because it doesn't show you the blocks that are up and coming and it was in the um that level that you have to rescue the bunny rabbit that i realized oh that that's why tetris gives you the that's the block that's coming next feature yeah it because there's a game I, made for babies that need to cheat <laughs> yeah no that that's when tetris clicked for me it's like eh, that's why they did that right so this game taught me that i'll give it that <laughs> but the yeah the that's why that particular feature was there but you know i may look like jesus but i don't shun RNGs, Jesus and this game is very reliant on uh the random number random number generator and frustrating as it may be at times it feels good when it does work so minus that one share for the controls that's three <laughs> three chairs how about you jordan <laughs> yeah on uh fedora 32 and 33 because i'm really bad about keeping my boxes fully in sync uh on the i7 6700k with the rx 5700 xt watch it out of the box same with the r9 3900x and the gtx 1080 ti no worries er, according to the internal furps counter it runs at like eleven thousand frames a second i don't know how accurate <laughs> that number is but like you you get you get the point this is not a graphical jugger juggernaut um it has a nice relaxing soundtrack and like i was saying in uh, pedro's thing i I don't think a super tense, like, pumping soundtrack would work for this game. It would probably fuck you up more often than not. So, you know, Zen music's probably the way to go. Um, and, yeah, um, I, I tried this with the uh, PlayStation 4 controller. I tried it with the Switch Pro controller. It does not like the Switch Pro for whatever reason, uh, Steam input or no. Uh, but with the DualShock 4, it worked fine. Uh, Fun-wise, yeah, my... This, this is a personal problem I have with these games, but, like, my brain refuses to acknowledge that this is not Tetris. Because every time I try to do something, my muscle memory is like, this is how you do it in Tetris. And the game is like, you're fucking wrong, bread. And I, I can intellectually recognize this, but my hands are not keeping up. Um, fi fighting my muscle memory is, like, half the challenge with tricky towers or games like this. Um, that said, um, it's a pretty fun block puzzle ma block matching puzzle game um they really do make you pull out all the stops some of the puzzles especially when you're dealing with stuff anything that requires more than five tiles is just like five dimensional chests you need to you need to really plan ahead um there's a single player uh co-op mode that does a pretty good job of like showing you all the various challenges and ways you can solve pu puzzles i was playing this with my girlfriend who is way smarter than i am so she was able to solve the puzzles very very quickly unlike my, my stupid ass but you know <laughs> that's the point of having a co-op mode um and yeah, so after all that, it goes, have fun, fuckos. Here, try and build something with only yellow blocks. That's five blocks in size. Good luck. Um, so def definitely a lot of depths of the puzzle mechanic. The fight mechanic, too. Uh, you're kind of seeing this boss or one of the boss fights that Pedro's doing. But you can make attacks by just doing cheap combos, or you can try to solve the main puzzles and go for the instant win. Um, you're given two screens, like Ven said. And yeah, it's kind of up to you on how to use them. Ven was using attack versus um, uh, solve. I was using the 
them for different colors. And there's no real good, there's no real superior way to go about it. It's all about how you're able to make it work for you. And that's sort of, that's what's really cool about the mechanisms here where it's deep enough that you can sort of make your own style, but there is, there are some dominant strategy things that emerge. Um, so yeah, I, I really like it. The puzzles are very, very good. It's a very solid game for the price point. You will get your $15 worth of entertainment from it while, you? while you're not playing it because you're going to be thinking about how to solve these fucking puzzles. Um, like Ben said, not a lot of an active online community. So if you don't have someone to play with, you're going to be in forever alone mode. Uh, which is a bit sad, but it's not really the game's fault. There's just so many games on Steam that you can't reasonably expect everyone to be playing everything. I'm going to give it three cheers. It is a solid, rollicking, good time. Good puzzle game. Good job. Now, a couple of things I think we want to bring up, uh, like ideas and suggestions. First off, uh, if you're watching the video, if you're listening, you got to use your mind. Even watching the video, it's hard to convey like the challenge, the engagement you get when you start playing this game. Because if you like games that make you think... This is going to do it, but there's also the action component with the battles. You know, you have to stage that because you get your shields and you can bring up different items. And you got to make those decisions like, hey, man, do it, do you it. have to, to also to account this? for what the AI is doing or what your actual human opponent is doing. If you're playing multiplayer, that, that yeah, <laughs> that messes with your brain. It's, it's really good. Bit. It's really fun. I enjoyed it. <laughs> now, I will say maybe a suggestion is because of the like online component it would be nice to see in an update if there was an option to while i was waiting for an online component um a, a player a match to allow me to play through the game like continue on my voyage and once i get a match or, it's like hey you got somebody you want to bounce into that yes i do or maybe some steamworks integration because like the only reason Ben and i were able to play with each other is because no one's fucking playing the game that was uh, quite quite genuinely the conversation i was like yeah just mm-hmm. click search online you'll find me and yeah. <laughs> so maybe something to consider all in all fun game i we mm-hmm. like a good puzzle game this is right up there with uh steven sausage roll oh yeah it's like oh it, it can't oh, be yeah. that difficult <laughs> and you were wrong it is uh, here here's a full disclosure because pedro you know pedro's the keeper of the chairs he puts the stuff in the notes i'm like what are we fucking with this week oh this aloof let me download that that's a little game I was like fucking Tetris club. I, I would, I was like, you know what? I'll find something. Fuck. But I played it. I'm like, oh shit. There we go. All right. I like this. So no, seriously. Mm. Major kudos to um, Joram, uh, who set us the keys. I'm assuming is the uh, the main dev. And uh, next. just to quote uh, the email that I got, I like to support the Linux gaming community. Thanks for your interest. So yeah. thank you. Thank you very much for this absolute gem of a game that I did not expect it to be that good, but it is. <laughs> that's a lot of, that's what we can say about a lot of the puzzle games. Like that fucking bejeweled ones. Like yeah, I was no about one was one expecting, was like what? Yep. No one was expecting that to be like really fun. Right. right. So more, more, moral of the story. Don't judge a book by its cover. Coming up next, we address feedback from someone who apparently was not paying attention last week. <laughs> And this is the Necronomicon. And here we are. It's the end of the show. You made it. Kudos. Seriously. Congratulations. Yay! (laughs) You suffered through all of that. (laughs) Crawled across the finish line. Pretty much. Uh, Welcome to the whatever the percentage is of people that watch our videos all the way through the end. It's single digits. I don't remember exactly the value, but it's single digits. Uh, If you're listening to us uh, via... um your podcatcher kudos don't worry the next one will be over very very soon we only have the one bit of hate mail but hey if you'd like to contribute your own bit of hate mail you can do that you can go to linuxgamecast.com you hit the contact button there's a form you gotta fill it's pretty easy lgc weekly is the topic you want to pick for the hate mail uh otherwise we will take some uh criticism or feedback uh over on wednesdays if you'd like just pick lwd for possible that. maybe we could take some critical feedback we could we absolutely could we should you have to roll a 20 that. and then you'll have to check the threat range against the uh rac but you know you i'm do sorry you. i heard nerd mumble <laughs> rap i was zoned out what'd you say you don't you don't need to, you don't need to do it anymore you just gotta roll a 20 that's the crit nowadays <laughs> all right oh so that's just a crit okay a little bit comes from wailing fungus oh four heroic game launches and he writes 
I've listened to LGC for multiple years. That's a personal problem. And do not <laughs> recall any. That's the alcohol. Recent talk about the Epic Game Store, Linux Launcher Projects, Legendary CLI, and Heroic GUI. Discover Where them have you on been YouTube for the channel. past three weeks? <laughs> they worked pretty well for me, except not being able to choo choo choose which wine or proton to use. Have you talked about these? And I forgot again, back to the alcohol. Wouldn't like your opinions. Hmm. This is this is from several weeks ago, right? Because A, Two we talked ago. about it last no, we week. We talked about it now. Have we and talk- then they added the ability to select wine, so have we talked <laughs> now this came in before the show last week, but just Okay, so it just okay. didn't underline. <laughs> All right. That, All right. That, that, but that yeah, no, makes, uh, makes previous... it but wait, but... Hang on, hang on. I, I, I want everyone to describe what, what I'm going to try to do something here. Uh oh. <laughs> Heroic. What am I doing? I don't know. Using the search box? Thank you. <laughs> So we we're 40. Well, okay. So that was nine episodes ago. Yes. January 24th. <laughs> Uh, March 46, that was three episodes ago. Yeah. Uh, 372, that was a long time ago. 448, that was last week. Last episode, yep. Like I said, where have you been for the past several weeks? Oh, God. (laughs) There's Strider. Man, that, that was my that was my old apartment. Hot damn. Now, let me be honest with you. I'm not giving you a hard time. Uh, what I am saying is um, I've spent a lot of time dialing in our search engine. So if you ever have a question like that, throw it to the search on the site. You'll be surprised by it. It's like, hey, these have talked about it. But uh, just in case you did genuinely forget about it, the Heroic Game Launcher. Yeah, we've talked about that. I thought about tangoing with that because I was having the wine i386 uh, architecture issue on uh, bullseye. And I wanted like, Hey, is there a quick way to just get wine up and running? And I downloaded the app image of the heroic game launcher. I was curious, but step one to that is like, enter your Epic store ID creds. I'm like, fuck off. So, <laughs> yeah. yeah. kind of what it does. I, I know, but I just wanted something to install the wines, Pedro. <laughs> <laughs> then you need then you need to install wine clicker from wineclicker.ru.exe. Just install it and run it as root. Yeah, it's some sketchy website. Play, play on Linux yeah. or you know, Lutris. <laughs> I didn't I forget about play on Linux. I, oh, that's a good question. Here's a question about Lutris. So let's say I have like an exe like installer. Right. And I just can I just in, like set up a 32 bit inside of uh Lutris and install that? Yes. Yeah. How? Do uh, you create, you just create a new... Well, well um, welcome to the tutorial segment of the podcast, <laughs> where we're, gonna, we're going to verbally describe how to do this. Let me just start Lutris. It's easier this way. You just click the plus icon on the top. Oh my god, he's actually doing it. The game info, you type in the name, and you select the runner, you select wine. Mm-hmm. And then you go through the options and set it up accordingly, and then click save. Didn't work. <laughs> I, That's now, impressive. Now, in my defense, I was installing Lutris from the Debian repo. So who knows? Uh, maybe you need a 32 bit system D for that. I, I I tapped out because like I what I wanted to do I will go ahead and tell everyone about it. Uh, there was a I watched it on like a speed run. So they were doing a GDQ or something like that. There's a Atari D make for Mega Man, mm. which is like that's that's fucking dope. I want to play that, and I was going to stream it on Friday, but I like ran into this and my give a fuck a meter is just like peg. Like I don't care enough. We'll just play some <laughs> black Mesa, but I do believe on that. Beautiful, heroic bombshell. Cue the music. You can always find us kicking off at 8.30 Eastern Standard Moon Time all over your face, chest and neck. If you want to um, be super special, kick us a like quarter a week. You can come hang out an hour earlier where we discuss the uh, salacious bits of the show in the pre-pre-super shows and, or listen to it after the fact in your custom RSS feed over at patreon.com. Keep being awesome about that. Scream in my direction. On Twitter at Vinstone, that's where I'm at, or just at Vin at mast.linuxgamecast.com. 
My name is Jordan Svung, and I want you to petition Strider to have Lutra support installing me for Magui. Until then, you can find me on Twitter at The Burning Fool or streaming on Twitch. <laughs> Magui. Yeah, that, or that uh, streaming on Twitch. Yeah, look at look at this. <laughs> streaming on Twitch at twitch.tv slash Burning Fool. There. Not enough gooey stuff happening over here. I am Pedro Mateos. You can find me at unaccounted for on Twitter or technically also at unaccounted for, but with the actual number four on mass.linuxgamecast.com, though I do not go there often enough to justify that. It, it, so, listen, he's running on limited <laughs> cycles. Let's roll some credits. He's only got that one it, CPU. It's Central Pedro unit. <laughs> he's single threaded and has no FPU. <laughs> He's single threaded and ready to mingle threaded. <laughs> that didn't make oh, any man. damn sense, but all right. You Another know what? That's, the, that, that's something. That, that's <laughs> that's kind of the point. We got to thank our executive producers, our lovely patrons, making it possible. Aldi, Aspar, Bramp, Scott Michaud, Mr. Fox Dog, Arthurin, the Atomic Ass, Mike G, MT, Drummer Seven, our solitary little Nikki fan, Dark Wing, Dark Wing, favorite Dark duck. Wing like that. Yeah, yeah, and RC mm. Monsters, Jack Renault, Ryder X Machina, Paul Veridanuda, Justin, and Frosty the Clawman. We got some death and notes like Nova K, Basil B, notes. Chad Romero, Mark, uh, Craig H, Renee, Leonardo, Dak, Kim, Smash, Chris, Steve, and Jill, and Benjamin. And of course, all the chairlings, which also includes Steve and Jill, but they're further down. And uh, Jason B, Lord Mocha, Joel W, Kyle Linux, Giovanni, Joanna, See, I can do some Christopher basic tracking. C, I'll be Nubbin, able to that in post Joel for Jim. E. Steve and Jill will be there. Reginald O, Mr. Sensor. Alert, Simcha B. Where's Steve and Jill? Ah, geek. I don't see it. Oh, you you finally updated it. Okay. <laughs> Fuck you, Pedro. You're so wrong it hurts. I'm gonna pull something on how wrong you are. <laughs> so wrong it hurts is basically the catchphrase for Linux Gamecast. Benefit everyone. We'll see you next week. Bye bye. Me, yeah. <laughs> Love hurts. Five dudes. <laughs>